Well, hello everyone, and welcome to episode number 80 of Final Boss TV, your WoW and game rating show. I will be your host this evening, as per usual. My name is Adam K, K. A. Bay, and today is, uh, uh, good, uh, are you guys ready for some glitter? It gets everywhere, right? It gets, it gets everywhere, and Blizzard likes glitter too, so they, uh, they gave Retribution Paladins a lot of it. It was fun in Siege of Ogremar, but now you get to deal with it all the time! Oh, yes! So we're talking about Retribution Paladins today, in the Warlords of Glitter Storm. And, uh, who, who are our guests, you, you might ask? Well, one of them is back from uh, Mr. Pindaria. There's there's Bear. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Y'all set for this? You ready to go? Yeah, I got my salt right in front of me. Yeah. How many salt shakers do you have? At least seven? Yeah. I, like, I got I got a 10-pound bag on my side there, so... <laughs> ten it's, it, it's enough to go around. It's like a, like a scooper, like a little shovel, just pour it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, it's good to have you back, buddy. Glad to be back. And joining us from Vodka, there's Soul Sakura. Hello, sir. How you doing? How are you doing? I think we're, I think we're ready for this. Do you, do you have a, a proportional amount of salt ready as well? I do. But I'm not quite sure I want to bring that out quite yet. Okay, we'll give it like a we'll, we'll warm up, like 40 minutes, let it stew for a bit. That sounds about right. Okay, all right. So 40 minutes from now, we'll we'll we'll, we'll bring it up. All right, that should be we should be we should be primed by then to uh, to have plenty of it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't even know. I mean, obviously I play in I play enhanced shaman as my main, but I also have a my ret pally is my alt, and I've always called it baby hands. And I'm always like, you know, it's kind of like an easier version. There's only one cooldown, you know, you just hit the buttons light up, and it's it's fun, you know. But uh, making this show and putting it together, I really found out that there is a lot more sort of going on, I guess, and sort of like problems abound, like building up, right? It's not not as simple as I may have at first thought. So. Yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's not bad at base level. There are some problems, especially with like Empowered Divine Storm, but right. for the most part, it does work really well. Yeah, We'll have to see. I don't know. I mean, how how have you thought you've been playing Retribution Paladin so far in Warlord's Bear? What what are your early thoughts here? Heimel, we were okay. Like encounters were more call it suited to us. There was like no abundant cleave or AOE phases or anything. It was just more like straight single targets and like things like scaling didn't really set in for most classes and yeah, it was a good time for us overall uh, changes from the beta and so on went on smoothly like there's a couple dark dark points but we'll get into that later i guess yeah i, I mean the first thing I, I guess i want to bring up of course as i ask everybody is just how the transition from mists to warlords went and through the show of course we did this when we went through with holy paladins i did the same thing when we went through protection paladins Paladins have like so much almost like you know single targeted oriented utility in that regard like they're brought for um, <clears throat> Laying their hands on people sleep bag, um, but Did that take a hit for Rhett because I think the biggest thing you guys lost you I mean you lost Eva aura So is that like a huge change in like the utility push for retribution paladin soul? Like how did that go down? How did the mists to warlords transition go for you guys? Uh, for the most part, it actually went really well. I can't remember very many players that actually enjoyed Guardian of Ancient Kings when Inqui in, and uh, Inquisition. Right. So their removal was great. I have no problems with that. Um, Devotion Aura, that hurt. But theoretically, it was part of a larger cutback on utility across the board. That didn't really quite work out in our favor. It did, so it didn't work out. So uh, do you feel like you are... Was it pruned enough for Mists to Warlords, or pruned too much, or too little, or were there still things you would like changed then? Um, well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't like anything else changed. I would like them to revert the Empowered Divine Storm implementation, though. Other than that, mm -hmm. it's good. There's not many problems there. 
do you do you feel the same way, Bear? What are your thoughts on Empowered Divine Storm becoming baseline? Uh, it was a hot fix for our AoE in Siege of Argomar through the tier set bonus, and now that it's like baseline and like a leveling bonus perk, then you know it's still a call it a fix for our AoE that doesn't really work, and it causes a lot of other underlying problems because procs on top of procs just means you'll chain proc for 40 seconds and you know that's looks fun and everything but it's not very effect effective at the moment i i guess there's a big difference between how class is sort of a we always this weird hot topic right because a lot of fights in the echelon of how blizzard creates encounters right you have single target counters you have cleaving counters you have aoe encounters you know one of the two um, usually, Blizzard always has like, you know, it's a single target guy that has ads sometimes, or it's a guy that has ads all the time, or it's just like two or three bosses at a council fight. So, some classes always seem to really excel at that, but I guess in that regard with Retribution, you can do AoE, maybe? Like, you you can obviously go to Seal of the Righteous and auto attack, and then hit Hammer of the Righteous, but that's all you can do outside of proccing, right? So, like, is that just not... Is the teeter-totter of, like, reward versus performance, like, is that a good thing to have? Definitely not in Retribution's case. Um, as I've said before, the extent of your consistency begins and ends with your first Divine Storm. And that's never a good thing. Yep. So how you does, know, like... We, we can, oh, go ahead. We can have massive swings. Like, it's not unusual to swing from 80k to 240k in any given 10 second segment and i don't think that's really great for the spec as a whole yeah i mean in theory and like talking about math and so on you know the large number principle or whatever like the more things you do the lesser the variance is going to be but from one pull to the next or from a one like burst phase to another, it can be a huge difference, and especially raiding with another uh, red paladin in the guild, uh, you can see on pool in particular who's going to have the biggest impact because his trinket lines up or his, you know, his procs just procs on top of each other and he just flies up, flies ahead of you, and it's it's got nothing to do with you know skill or who who's got the better gear. It's just who has the procs at the right time, and it's a really bad way to. To play when you try to be com competitive and try to progress and try to be as consistent as possible. Right, and now usually in the in the in the three tier echelon of how fights are balanced for Blizzard, not every class will be good at all three of them, unless you're a Windwalker monk. Um, but, or I guess right now a Death Knight. So, is that okay that like each class sort of? Because I'm, I'm thinking like in my head like Chromog. What if you go into the hand phase? And early on in progression, when breaking people out of the hands, like, in, in a smooth fashion, was really important, right? To get back on the boss, to get ready for the uh, giant rock pillars. If you go in, and you get, like, one Divine Storm, and then nothing happens, how yeah. that part of the fight, you just, like, hope you can help your guildies get broken out of the hands? Or yeah. other ones, you could, like, Divine Storm five times in a row! Yeah, it, it's not a good thing. Like, a more... Or like a better example is the boats on uh, on Iron Maidens. Like if like my guild, we use two red paladins, paladins up there, and if both of us are really really bad RNG, then we're not gonna kill it. Simple as that. And you know, that's part of the issue. Even on single targets, I mean, there's interactions between everything when it comes to divine purpose and empower divine storm. So you need to get rid of get rid of Empowered Divine Storm, ideally. Right. And Soul, do you have you ever rated it like what Bear does with like two different pallies so you can see like the difference in disparities and like one one pull you're like way ahead or the other pull your your buddy's way ahead? Or have you just seen like that in, in logs how they like just propagate out like the incredible differences in damage and mostly and through logs. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um no, I would say consistency is the key to progress in this case, and just seeing that variance and all the RNG factors on top of that just doesn't provide that gameplay that we need to get the job done. I would be fine if we didn't have it, at least that way we would know we're a class that isn't meant to do that job. Right. So then in that regard, then, looking at, like, High Mall and Black Ark Foundry now, for what we've seen, 
and like we're, we're the red pally struggle right now right early on it was like a weird mishmash of the gear wasn't even working out and and the encounters may have not been that great for you i mean i have the same issues with enhancement shaman but so what like what are the strong upsides then so where does red where is red good right now like what what is it excelling at to, you know like we can take mythic high uh high mall unblocker foundry into perspective here like where where are you seeing that it still works out just fine like what do you think bear hand abilities <laughs> is that it that's all you get yeah yeah well apart from high mall we're, we're okay but yeah hand abilities is our niche if you want to call it that which is kind of sad considering we're a dps class and you're talking about like obviously blessing of sacrif uh, sacrifice. Yeah, hand of, hand, of, hand of sacrifice, hand of protection, lay on hands. Protection, lay on hands. Yeah, yeah. Is, but is that reason enough to bring retribution paladins though? Not if you have two holy paladins or a holy paladin and a protect paladin, because you have clemency, which is a amazing talent. But you know, in a twin man raid, you don't need eighteen hand of protections and so on. So. You know, right. there, there, there's, there comes a point rather quickly where it's just wasted. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What do you think, Soul? Anything that you can particularly think that, like, outside of the hands of protection and, and you know, bops and sacks and stuff like that, what do, what do you, what are Red Pally is good at right now in, in for progression and whatnot? Uh, unfortunately, nothing that's really related <laughs> to DPS. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. Um, it really does boil down to hands and their application. Like, we, we're good DPS-wise, but we're really not pumping out amazing numbers on any particular subject. Right. I mean, because I remember back to High Mall, and this is the era of, like, the prot pallies being, like, a DPS class at the same time. And Rhett were doing a really good job. Like, I thought, like, because we were like, wow, Rhett's not getting nerfed again. Wow, Rhett's not getting nerfed again. Like, as the hotfixes rolled out and rolled out and rolled out. And we always thought they were really over overpowered, right? But it's the sleeper OP right now. Everyone's gonna get red pallies in their in their guilds and in their runs. But then Blackrock Foundry hit, and that just like vanished. Like we never heard that ever anymore. And it was always like it's mages, warlocks, and hunters, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So what happened with red pallies going in and getting your set bonus and getting better gear out of these? Like, Soul, what what happened? What was the problem? What what transpired in Blackrock that? That changed well, that. in High Mall, our strength is short duration, high single target output. And we excelled at that, especially on fights like Butcher, Brackenspore, Margok, Korog. All the fights in there catered to our strengths. Sure. But in Blackrock Foundry, there's a lot of cleave and high movement. And in general, it doesn't cater to melee at all. So you have sure. that inherent disadvantage. So apart with, with the cleave, as garbage as it is, we just kind of fall behind. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that brings it back to the point, this whole thing full circle, back to Empower Divine Storm. Um, you wanted me to bring up probability theory, and, like, if that, what does this do for Retribution Paladins? And on a, In progression sense, right, you're going to pull a boss multiple times, but not enough to really, like, smooth out this weird RNG style of play. So, like, what are the good, the bad, and the ugly of, like, how a protection paladin looks on progress and like what are your th thoughts on like the whole like whack-a-mole you know uh rotation and stuff like that soul like what is this what does this all mean to, i don't know i'm not that good at paladin apparently <laughs> it, it just means that we're not the class for that job especially with this design you know we can't um for an example when we were doing thogar progression after the second spawn of split trains, you need to AoE down like 30 adds at once. But it doesn't do me much good when I'm doing 80k, 80K DPS one pull and then 300k the next, just purely on luck. So when you really boil it down, sure, it can be great on chance. But if you look at the facts, we're just not a class that can do that reliably. Right. I mean, obviously, you're in a raid with other DPS that are going to be doing things, but from that standpoint, we're talking about the, the Retribution Paladin player, where you can feel really awesome like Superman sometimes, and then not a lot of other times, because there's so much back and forth interaction with this whack-a-mole system. So, I mean, what, you, have, you have Art of War, Empowered Divine Storm, with coupled with Divine Purpose, mm -hmm. you have 
um, your set bonuses, which even even the new tier eighteen, which we get into a little bit, are still focused around exorcism, which is the, is the reset. Um, the new trinket interaction incoming. I mean, is there anything else I'm missing here? Like, what else do you have on this whack-a-mole train? That's about everything, actually. Oh. Yeah. Only, only, only like <laughs> seven things. No, only no. like seven or eight procs, but you know we'll ignore that. <laughs> right. Is that too it, many? It, it, oh, go ahead, Bear. Yeah. It, no, just con continue. I was say, is that is that just too many? Like, is there like a yeah a limit on how many a class should have? It, like we talked briefly about yesterday or earlier this show. Um, in, when when players get too many things, like empowered uh, divine storm, and we can talk to death about that thing, but like uh, empowered <laughs> seals is most likely going to be the the thing to play with for the next year with the uh, set bonus and so on, and and then the class specific trinket that has like its own duration, and then you have exorcism, so you you kind of have to force to use crusade strike judgment and um, exorcism on a regular basis and. Where does that leave room for, you know, using your finishers, using procs if you still get them, and so on? I mean, there, there's a lot of things to do, and in my opinion, ninety percent of the players are not going to be able to do that or want to do that. So it's just, it, it's too much, and yeah, it, things need to change on the PTR and further on in the expansion. Right. I mean, Sol, do you have any thoughts about like how or what could be fixed in the rotation-wise to not make Retribution Paladin so, like, I mean, it's like a joke for a long time that you you hit what lights up, but that's, is that even like fun gameplay? So, what do you what do you have thoughts on how to like maybe possibly fix it? I mean, you want to you guys both want to remove Empower Divine Storm, right? It was a fun set bonus when it lasted, but it shouldn't be part of the kit. But what else do you got, mm -hmm. Sol? What else do you think? Well, fortunately, a lot of the problems we have now are just strictly related to Tier 17 and their set bonuses. Sure. And that's going to go away when we get to Tier 18, so we're actually going to get a better picture of where we sit without them. Um, aside from that, the new bonuses look okay. I'm not a fan of the fact that it's Exorcism for the fourth tier in a row. Right. Um, I think they should be going somewhere else with that design, you know, something that maybe jives with our Holy Power expenditure. Um, the current exorcism implementation just disproportionately skews uh, Sanctified Wrath and Empowered Seals at this point, which isn't exactly exciting. Right. And he just did, as chat room leans back into chairs and goes, <gasps> what? He did just say Empowered Seals, and it's probably going to be a big deal on the horizon soon, right? And is that, are you looking forward to that, <laughs> boys? Yeah, looking forward to that. Personally, I don't care so long as it isn't the Proc City that we have now. I'm okay with well, it. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, Proc City is replaced by GCD City because you have to keep rotating out seals and judging different ones to keep buffs up. So that means that you trade one evil for another, right? I guess. I suppose. Hmm. Anything to add on that, Bear? Not without jumping like 40 minutes into the show notes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll hold that then. I guess we'll, yeah. we'll hold that. But uh, talking about how you brought up the utility of, of the hands of the Paladins, it used to be Blessings, right? So Bop is really yep. good at certain mechanics. Um, and then, of course, the Glyft Hand of Sack. But we looked through in prepping the show notes that Tier 18 doesn't have a lot of that on the horizon. Or as much as... I mean, I've tested 10 of the 13 bosses... And there wasn't many like, yeah, we could bop that, or you know, you can obviously use sacrifice, but I don't know if that if that gets a little weaker in priority for for top end guilds, will that are we gonna see a lot of the top end guilds like not bringing red pallies, and then people are gonna think like, oh, red pallies are terrible in tier eighteen, oh no, oh. like how's that how's that gonna work, Soul? It could very well happen. Um, keep in mind the big part of the reason why rets weren't brought at the end of Blackrock Foundry was because melee was just garbage as a whole. Um, utility definitely plays a factor, but if our DPS is at a level that's appropriate where it wouldn't really matter if we're bringing a red or not, then that's okay. But I guess that remains to be seen where they take tuning. Right. Yeah, I don't... It's, it's a weird place to look at. Because each class sort of has a, has a 
go through these episodes and build the show and talk to people has like a different perspective on how things are changing for them going into the next tier. People are some classes are really really important. Like they they think that things are finally gonna be fixed. Other classes are just like we're just adding more problems. <laughs> so we'll have to. It, it, it's like this weird DPS teeter totter, right? Why do you why do you think it's so prevalent in the balancing of the? I guess the melee game, Bear. What do you think? Well, each melee have their own things that are strong at, and they, you know, may may not may just uh, rogues can like avoid a lot of damage because they have AOE reductions to faint and glyph and so on. And then you have feraldries who bring roar and like things like that, and you know. Each melee have their own individual thing, whether it be like tank coolants or you know AOE grips and so on. Depending on fights, you know, the point or whatever you want to call it, like DPS should be brought for the DPS, and like if you have AOE grip, that's good, but it shouldn't be everything to that fight, or it shouldn't be the reason you bring someone, because it's just leading into problems of balancing and tuning. Well, uh, yeah. It's funny you bring up Gorfine's Grasp, because if you're a Death Knight right now, I'll address the chat room right now, if you're a Death Knight right now, DPS or tanking, you're going to have a lot of fun in Hellfire Citadel. Just putting that out there. Just saying. Yeah. If you don't know yet, you'll know soon enough. Yeah. I mean... In the past as well, like on Lei Shen in Mr. Pandaria, in Mr. Pandaria, you know, AoE Death Grip on uh, on the Ball of Lightnings when they spawned was considered mandatory because it like it meant you could burst them down in one before they leave the first time and so on. And while that's fine, it just brings this need of a specific class and so on, and it it just adds problems. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't... I'm concerned. More, I'd, I'd like more emphasize, emphasize on people doing damage instead of, you know, we get one extra roar or one extra typhoon or one extra grip or one extra lay on hands and so on. Yeah, it's weird. And now even that's a little getting more subjugated in the fact that after the Fox is being removed from Hunters and Employee yeah. Magic is being removed from Mages going into Tier 18. So now the, one, the cooldowns we have left are going to be even more important. So we'll have to see. Uh, we're going to go back to BRF real quick. I want to go over your tier 17 shenanigans here. So the Battle Gear of the Guiding Light is your two-piece. Is spending holy power equals a 20% chance to allow the use of Hammer of Wrath. So it, it basically another version of Divine Purpose built in baseline. Fun. And your Hammer of Wrath causes the next exorcism to generate through holy power. So like, they look cool on paper, right? You're like, cool, holy finishers, you know, give me Hammer of Wrath, and Hammer of Wrath is awesome. It used to be called Hammer of GG back in the day when it, like, crushed people. And then Hammer of Wrath gives you exorcism. It makes you get more holy power to do other finishers. But are these good? How'd these work out, Soul? Like, how'd they figure out as you guys have had these now for a couple months? Um, the two-piece proc rate is definitely too low. It's really inconsistent, but it does have one saving grace in the fact that, uh, it has a binomially distributed proc rate d based upon the number of targets hit with Divine Storm. So if you, say, hit eight targets, you're going to proc that Hammer of Wrath, and then you can fire off an Exorcism, get oh. that Holy Power, and use it for whatever you want. Uh, for single target, it's kind of dumpy, but for cleaving, it's decent. And this is going to be a problem going forward because we're not going to have this functionality. So our already weak and inconsistent cleave is going to get substantially worse. Wait, wait, so it can actually pro that why wouldn't it just have like one chance when using a finisher? Why does it matter how many targets you hit? That seems awful. I don't know. It might be a bug for all I know, but it works that way. Yeah. <laughs> because it, oh, go ahead, Bear. I was gonna say if you're single targeting, you have 20% chance per Templar's verdict to get it, but if you're A Wing or multi targeting with Glitter Storm, then you'll get more hammer of rats? Yeah, it it was something we discussed on the RC channel a while back, and we went through logs and we tested it as we chatted and so on. It was just figured out that you know it it's like twenty percent per target and not additive, but you know it, it it gets into this problem where you you really don't want to AOE or cleave, but if you do, then you get this extra proc, and so it, it's just not 
a good thing, in my opinion. Sure, it's sure it's a bonus and so on, whether it's intended or not. But yeah, I don't. It, yeah, it just looks like reading the tooltip that just every time you spend a holy power finisher, no matter what how many holy, no matter how, how much you spend, you know, between one or three, even though you're usually going to always be three, then you get a twenty percent chance. Period to use hammer of wrath. So. Mm -hmm. Because that would make then like cleave fights stronger because you'll get you'll actually just use uh, divine storm to then hammer of wrath the single target targets or whatnot, yeah. but but then because then if you get too many hammer of wraths can you actually even use it fast enough? The you... the main problem with it is the proc doesn't reset the cooldown of hammer of wrath. So if you're already during avenging wrath, which is a cooldown which enables uh, avenging or hammer of wrath. It, already or right. you're sub 35 percent it doesn't actually do anything it's just doesn't do anything so on short fights like handsome france or gruel or flame bender you know the two it's really really weak wait, but, wait, for wait. Long, but, but, but for longer fights it's good so if you actually have used your hammer of wrath but then yeah. it comes and then it procs. It, the proc doesn't actually give you it to use no no it just no it just it just gives you a buff that allows it to be used in the next Eight seconds or however long the buff it doesn't reset the cooldown. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So 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 for for the short duration fights it's really really bad. I, it might be an oversight by Blizzard. I don't know, but I mean, it chat, hasn't been looked at. Chances to be so overpowered if it reset the cooldown, but the fact is that like if you use a certain setup, then you actually just devoid the bonus entirely. Yeah. Or if you're already Hammer of Wrathing under, like, Execute phase, you don't get any benefit from it anymore because you already can use it. It just yeah. goes away. But then if you get... I guess if you get the buff, you get the Holy Power. But that was my thought when looking at these notes. You can technically, like... You have to make sure you Holy Power dump before you use the Exorcism, right? Because yeah. you could go to 6 Holy Power off that. And that's that's not good, right, Soul? No, you definitely don't want to cap. It... Below 35%, your rotation just goes John fucking Madden. And you gotta keep <laughs> stay on top of all of these procs and not overcap your uh, resources. I, it's I, a bit of a clusterfuck. Does this is like devil's advocate here because monks have a sort of, I guess, buffer on overcapping chi, which is their combo point system. Do if Blizzard wants to give all this like weird holy power interaction crap with Rhett, like do do you need something like that too, or do they need to not give you all these stupid weird proc based proc give you more things to proc the same thing that proc itself like but they, yeah they just need to not have that i mean we already have that system technically our cap is three but they've introduced an additional two through a perk yeah right and you're not you're not getting away from procs going to the next tier so i, I guess to just to go off of and finish tier 17 um which off piece would you slot instead of going all five is there a, which off piece do you go for uh it's are they going to be the black hand shoulders or the hands and franz gloves? Yeah. Are they like the same either or kind of thing or? Whichever is the highest eye level or has the socket is, is theoretically the best, but you know. Okay. Yeah. So no, no big like only this piece, but just whatever gets you uh, higher eye level on all those two yeah. pieces, those are the best one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fair. Um, are there any? Thoughts on trinkets in BRF, like the two best that you would pick? Uh, Vial of Convulsive Shadows and uh, Horn of Screaming Spirits, for sure. Yeah. Vial of Convulsive Shadows, just because you can macro that to your Avenging Wrath and forget about its existence. Right, and, of course. Yeah, and then Horn of Screaming Spirits is a mastery proc, and obviously, once that procs, you're going to want to dump your resources to benefit from that holy power. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Right, okay. So no, I always ask all the time now. There's no holding over high mall trinket shenanigans going on, none of that. Um, fortunately, no. Good. All right. Well, all the trinkets from high wall, high mall was generally really bad for red paladins to begin with. So. Ah. Okay. Good. You sure you didn't want that crit trinket? The crit trinket's pretty good, I hear. No, I'm just kidding. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Ch chance and hits to get a proc that get, gives you another chance and hit to do more damage. That's really beneficial. Okay. So then, after the tier 17 tomfoolery now, looking at 6.2, okay? 
which again we have there's, there's pros and cons again right now but they're not helping the weird proc based reliability of, of ret it's like it's like that's like your thing now it should literally be like the tagline of the class so you're getting your Archimon's Retribution Trinket, which is called a Liberum of Vindication. And this is, uh, I thought it was just cool at first. I read this and I was like, that's not bad. So Crusader Strike and Hammer of the Righteousness increase your damage by an X percentage, which is right now is incorrectly data mined. And it stacks three times per, per cast of the ability. So it takes about, you know, 12 to 15 seconds to stack up based on your haste or whatever. And then, but the effect resets if you Crusader Strike or Hammer the Righteous a different target. So, I guess that's the building platform to it. But what is this actually, Soul, you told me that you have to do something you might be macroing? Like a weird last target of target shenanigans crap? Basically, um, you're just going to macro a focus target function into your Crusader Strike. So if you have to attack something else, you're just going to hit that focus target macro so you continue to hit your previous target with Crusader Strike so your buff doesn't fall off. And in my opinion, that is literally the scummiest gameplay in the world to get the efficiency out of the trinket we need. I mean, what's... Is, is the math bear behind the trinket falling off and then restacking like to help balance the fact that it might be a large damage bonus? Right now on the PTR, it's like 570% or some crap. It's obviously not true. So, like, how does that, how does that work? Bear, what's the... Well, if it's anything like past PTR or whatever, it's going to be 5% per stack. So, okay. dropping it means big loss. That's pretty obvious. But the thing is, again, playing with Empowered Seals. I'm just going to bring up that again, because it's it's going to be deep down to use. Sorry, guys. It's... It's just it's it's just gonna be. Uh, so then you're, in you, you know you're forced to doing a judgment every couple of seconds, and then you're also forced to do a crusade attack every couple of seconds, and then you're also so, supposed to hit exorcism procs. I mean, it it just adds up things you have to do, and kind of like a couple other classes or specs, it, it at that point it just feels like a class is forcing you to play something instead of you doing something yourself. Right. So I, I, don't, I don't like the gameplay implications of it. No, I mean, I'm thinking of fights that would basically make this almost also impossible. Yeah. And then by design, are you going to... Because obviously Blizzard is giving us these cool new trinkets that we did in Siege of Ogremar. It's probably the last raid tier of this expansion. So they're like, oh, cool, give them neat little fun things and yay woo! And with the, with the CDR trinkets and the crit multiplier trinkets and stuff like that we had in Siege. But... Yeah. Because of this on certain fights, would you just actually take not this trinket for, like, I'm looking at Hellfire High Council. If you're going to switch targets between the bosses, when you have to go across the room to attack the other, you can't keep your buff up. It's going to fall off. So you mm. would you, on fights that you can't notably keep the buff up all the time, even with that weird focus target macro, would you actually just use other trinkets, Soul? Would you just not... <laughs> I suspect you would, but I haven't done the math on that yet, so right. I can't say for certain, but I, I would think it would happen in some scenarios. But st still, I guess, I mean, and this has implications of, like, it takes too long to ramp up on the pull. What if you do a full burst pull where you're popping heroism and your pre-pot and all those other things? Would you then also have to, like, delay your wings and stuff, too, to make sure you got your full stack of your trinket before you go ham? Your pre-pot's done by that point in time, almost. So you've lost that benefit to like line all up together. Is that mm -hmm. just how it's gonna work? I think so. And we we've also got to weigh in the legendary ring too when we're using Ugh. our cooldowns. Please. So no. I, there's simply too many variables to say for certain right now. But I'm I'm not too impressed with it. Right. Well, I'm I have that in the notes specifically to not we're not really bringing up the six point two legendary ring. I hope it changes DPS out there, please. Um, tell Blizzard it should be like a personal use thing and it's just a lesser amount of damage because right now it's just bad. Just take to the forums. Go. Take it Twitter. Make it fix change. But we'll talk about that 6.2 stuff in that detail in a later episode. But hi. Anything more on the trinket bear before I give you your set bonuses from your new tier? Nah. That's about it, I guess. You're I mean, so excited for this trinket, I can tell. Yeah, like, I mean... <laughs> If it's like 
everything is just screaming. That drink is like kind of like the legendary ring. It's just more trouble than it's a benefit. And I, like compared to say war DPS warriors uh, class drink, it really your auto attacks that doesn't really have your and big impact in your rotation. So if we could have like sort of the same same system to activate our class drink, that would be a lot better just from gameplay point. So I also looking at this in this way too, like comparing it to the enhancement shaman Archivon Trinket, which just makes Wind Fury do more damage and gives me more chances to get Maelstrom weapon charges. It just happens. Yeah. Is the retribution one like just incredibly lazy? You have to hit three spells to get full benefit. And then if you hit something else with the same spells, you lose the benefit. Mine's always on. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just it, it's just yeah. it's it's a boneheaded implementation where they really didn't think it through on the implications of how it's going to be used. I'm pretty sure at some point it's just going to change completely. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Maybe right. tied to exorcism. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of exorcism, ladies and gentlemen, the Watch of the Ceaseless Vigil, which, side note, the tier set looks cool. It looks like you're uh, another, like, judge from Final Fantasy universe. But why the hell do your little shoulder thingies, like, go up and then go down? That's all the animation you get. They just go like, eh, eh, that's, that's terrible. But anyway, hopefully. <sighs> your two piece of your new tier 18 is exorcism casts have a 100% chance to reduce the cooldown of Avenging Wrath by six seconds. And then your four piece is when you're in Avenging Wrath, you get a stacking 4% damage done every one second for 10 seconds. So... Like, the four-piece, I guess, sort of would make sense. Like, that's that sounds fine. But when it's tied and coupled with the two-piece, yeah, no. Right? Mm-hmm. And why is that? <laughs> well, as we just covered, we got Empowered Seals buffs to manage, and the Trinket buffs to manage, and we've got to manage this shitty-ass proc. Um, the fact that it's tied to Exorcism actually pisses me off. Um... Other than that, it's just not a very good design from the two pieces perspective. It's just too much clutter. Uh, the four piece works. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to snapshot well with our level 90 talents, I think they are. Right. Yeah, level 90 talents. So we can gain, you know, some decent gameplay out of the four piece, but the two piece is just shit on top of shit. <laughs> just. Uh, I. So what what should the two piece if they want to have this like avenging wrath cooldown thing integration be even though again the, the legendary ring thing this means your two minute cooldown will not line up with the legendary ring so that, that's a whole other ball of wax there but should the two piece be tied to something else like what spell should it work with bear or do you, is there another option for this uh, totally <sighs> honestly I'd just rather have it be always your two set just does something else, or like, just give it a flat reduction to Avenging Wrath. Why does it has to be have to be it has to be based on RNG and things like that? I mean, RNG is fun, sure, everyone agrees on that. But not when it takes too big part of your damage output, it it gets obnoxious because then it's a matter of who has and who hasn't. So, right. And so I think you suggested to me when they were making the show that it should be better just like when you spend holy power finishers, it should reduce the cooldown. Mm hmm. Yeah, because with exorcism as it is now, it's going to disproportionately skew sanctified wrath thanks to its greater uptime. Correct. So we're, the more exorcisms we're getting off through empowered seals means a higher AW uptime. Consider the fact that sanctified wrath is already a higher uptime, it's just going to extrapolate that problem. If they tied it to finishers, that's going to allow for a proportionate scaling rate of our level 75 talents as opposed to just skewing the one. So we can, you know, we're not putting ourselves at a disadvantage when we have to use, say, Divine Purpose for a cleave fight or Holy Avenger for a bursting fight. And on that note, I'm not sure why Holy Avenger isn't reduced by the two piece at the same moment because that severely devalues it. Yep, because then you're going to have a two minute cooldown. 
and then like a one-ish minute cooldown somewhere between like a 120, 130 with Avenging Wrath getting cooled down by Exorcism casts. So then you have in disproportionate cooldown stacking and sort of that's how Red Pally always has worked though. I mean, it took away two of your cooldowns to stack, but you still have, you know, up to two to stack. So it's... Uh, mm -hmm. I, and what is this crap that you talk about? Like the one-handed weapon nonsense that might happen that hopefully won't happen? <sighs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I love this. <laughs> so it might actually be viable in some circumstances to equip a really quick one-handed weapon, say like 1.5 or 1.6 speed, just to get off a bunch of quick white swing melee attacks to reduce that cooldown even further, thanks to the proc rate on Exorcism. Now this is, so, you would couple this of course with Empowered Seals to get the extra haste to make that one-hander swing even faster! Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine on a fight like uh, Blast Furnace, if you could, using a one-header, reduce the cooldown of your Avenging Wrath to one minute or or less, so it's always going to be up for every single of those primal elementalists. That's going to be a huge benefit for your raid or for your like specific damage to those mobs. It might be, or it's obviously going to be an overall DPS loss. But I mean, does that really matter if you have like this really specific job to do, which is like the core of the encounter i mean right yeah no because it, this is totally a real thing and we're not trying to like be a, like in a weird like derogatory sense of talking about this but if red pallets are good at lining up cooldowns and having huge burst windows there's the new legendary ring you take into account to this and if fights have those spine of deathwing-esque moments and you can tell your raid leader hey i can get my avenging wrath up all the time for every one of these phases if i auto attack with a freaking one-hander he's gonna be like get that one-hander boy right that's gonna happen yeah it, it's terrible so i go ahead Sol. i i think they should just remove exorcism entirely because i feel <laughs> like they're just gonna try and band-aid fix it and only allow exorcism to proc off of two-handed attacks I mean, keep in mind, this is kind of a thought experiment on a hypothetical scenario if you sure. can get it at one point. But the fact that it can even happen just blows my mind. This is the same sort of crap that I dealt with as Enhancement Shaman when we went and used spell power weapons, like a spell power main hand back in the day when, like, spell damage was a big deal. So we'd have a spell power main hand in Firelands and, like, a regular agility offhand. So, yeah. And that got patched out. So hopefully saying this in the open... Blizzard, please! <laughs> Maybe it was a mistake to mention it. Might have been. <laughs> now it might actually go live and it won't be touched. And you'll have... Oh. Yeah. Oh, boy. We'll have to see. Because obviously attacking more often is going to proc more Arts of War. And is it like a cap on how many Art of War procs you can have a minute? Or is there no... Is it just a percentage chance? Yeah. No, no cap. No, no cap. limitations. Straight up 20% luck. But if you're swinging it close to one hit a second, yeah, that's one every five seconds on average. So yeah. I mean, with, with my current haste gear, like I have a separate set for haste, just preparing for six point two and so on, with, with the set bonuses and so on. So you're already can... preparing? No, well, uh, uh, it's just drop drops have been like that. But sure. I, with them part seals and like uh, haste and chance and so on, I can already get up to like fifty percent haste buffed. Uh, in raids, and then you have a 3.6 second weapon that goes down to something. <laughs> that puppy. Yeah, that puppy is snoring. Uh, sorry, but yeah, you know, a, a 3.6 weapon is going to produce a certain number of procs, and then you have a 1.6 weapon going to almost double that procs. And does that equal to half the cooldown of a ranging rap? Maybe. Maybe. Well, so chat's wondering about how can you even get a sword that fast. But yeah, you would probably have a caster sword, a one-handed caster weapon, and you maybe agility you're weapons, or or that. Yeah, it's true. But you're looking at you're gonna have haste, but you might have fifteen to twenty percent haste raid buffed, and then you're looking at empowered seals giving you twenty percent more haste. So yeah, you could totally get a dagger speed one-handed weapon. Absolutely, you could get a one point three, no problem. Yeah, so. Hopefully that, yeah, that doesn't a... go live. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. But I... just in case there's a Chromog, there's a sword on 
off of uh, Chromog that you can use just for that. Are, are you telling the Red Pallies out there to prep for it? <laughs> they might have oh, to. Oh, gosh, man. All right. Well, I want to bring us over to some mathy stuff now. We'll, we'll jump back away from 6.2 real quick and go into live right now. Uh, stats and stuff that Red Pallies uh, want to care about. So you're looking at your mastery is called Hand of Light, which for some reason is getting nerfed in 6.2. I don't know why. You guys are like in the 40th percentile of average DPS or nerfing your best, whatever. So Crusader Strike, Hammer of the Righteous, Hammer of, the, Hammer of Wrath, Templar's Verdict, Divine Storm, and their multi-strikes deal additional percentage of damage is holy damage. Your attunement stat, of course, is Righteous Vengeance, where you get more mastery. So where are the stat lines up? Like how, what are your priority lists on stats to, you know, gem or enchant and then make sure you have on your gear? So what's the... Uh, the answer to that is mastery all of the things. <laughs> and after that, it really doesn't matter what you pick up. Um, obviously, crit really? and multi-striker. Yeah. Crit and multi-striker, pretty close. Haste is a little bit behind, and then versatility falls at the back of the pack. They're all pretty close. I can't actually complain about our stat balance at all. Right. Chat, chat brings up, they're nerfing it to make gearing properly matter even less. <laughs> pretty well, much. I mean... It's a 6% scaling reduction to mastery. Overall, you're talking to less than 1% defective defense loss. It's, it's, not right. even a, it's not even a thing. I mean, it, we're going to get other tuning changes anyway, so it's, it's, it doesn't mean that they're thinking Red Sword into too well DPS or whatever. It's just sure. tuning. No, it's a tuning thing. Same thing with like Elemental Shamans getting their multi-strike cut back because eventually they'll be like 100% multi-strike in Tier 18 gear, so they gotta, they can't make that happen. But... That's still because other DPS classes sort of have like interactions with like crit and their multi strikes are a little bit different. I mean, I guess your hand of light does work with your multi strikes, so that's how I've always heard it, right? Like you want mastery, and I guess multi strike is good too, and then everything else just. Yeah, I mean something that's brought up brought up in chat with haste fifteen percent and so on. There's a, a simulated value at around fifteen percent that haste is. Like at the at the max before the next theoretical point, but in raids it's not a thing. Don't, don't, don't gem or uh, enchant for haste to reach that fifteen percent. It's not a thing. It's not worth it at the moment, and it's just don't just master everything. Yeah, I've heard that. Like, I mean, you get like ten percent just on gear, just happening. Like my my paladin, who's like I don't even raid on him anymore. But he's at ten percent ish, just standing around. So he gets five percent more being a raid. So you're you're there if there's this, yeah. you know, woo, theoretical amount of, of haste. But then that also makes you wonder though, if you're, if haste isn't that big of a deal, then why are you going to go with empowered seals though? Because twenty percent is just too much. The value is multiplicative with the stat. Right. So that twenty percent amplifies that value of haste rating. So you're getting actually twenty percent on top of twenty percent. Uh, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Put. wait, what? Go back back up real quick. How's that work? Okay, so the 20% bluff applies a flat 20% haste value. Yes. And then there's a multiplier of 20% that multiplies that value of the haste rating itself. So you get like 1% haste per 90 plus 20%. So it would you'd need like 70-something to get that 1% haste at the same time. Mm. And it also, for the next tier, it also works too. Well, almost too well with the two sets. So. Mm -hmm. Well, right, of course, because auto attacks proc Art of War, which resets yeah. the cooldown of Exorcism, which then reduces the cooldown of Avenging Wrath. Yeah. Oh, man. It's... So, so it's, not, it's not that haste suddenly becomes good because something changes in scaling or anything. It's just haste becomes good because it reduces the cooldown of Avenging Wrath with, and so on, so... Right. Yeah. Okay. I we have I sort of like relate certain classes to like different board games at times, and the class representation of a board game for Retribution Paladins to me was a game of Jenga. Which you're not sure what Jenga is, you can go Google it. But it's about moving these little blocks that are three by three stacked in a crosshatch pattern on top of each other to the top of the tower without having it collapse down. And Ret feels like that. You're just moving procs up here, and eventually the tower is so weird that it's. That's what the class is going right now. DKs last week were a weird clay statue you just threw stuff at. So 
this this Jenga game that you guys are playing right now with just like adding on procs and this proc does that proc and that proc can proc this proc that also can proc that proc. You're like the boomkins of melee. The class is kind of like the game plays you. You just push the buttons. Man, you're what? like the Stanley Parable of melee DPS. <laughs> if you played that game, chat room might freak out. But yes. <laughs> but what you got on that soul? Anything before I move us on? Uh, no, we're definitely going to get there next year with uh, Empowered Seals, the Trinket, and the cooldown reduction. Yeah. That's going to be the point where it's just going to break. Yeah, I just don't... I think having healthy amounts of interactions with RNG in a class, like two or three, works fine. But not all the ones that you guys have right now. Yeah. Like, I've, I've been a big fan of, like, the more you effort you put into something, the better rewards you're going to get. And, like, that's the thing that certainly is going to increase with using Empowered Seals and the Class Trinket and, and so on, right? But those three things we're going to have to be forced to watch and maintain for the next uh, next year, or four things if you can consider that Empowered Seals is two different buffs. Yeah. It, it, it for, Like I said, it's for 90% of the players, it's something that they're not going to be interested in or can't perform optimally. So it's I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of uproar when the patch goes live if things stay as they are. Because it, as it is on the beta now, or as it looks like it's going to play out, it's too much. It's it's way too much. Right. And this is, again, regular, remember, remember chat room, we're talking about this being that Empowered Seals, which everyone looked at and like, yay, seal twisting! Oh, yay, vanilla! You're, you're looking at adding on GCDs into your already pretty tightly tuned rotation of managing procs that then change the order in which you want to hit those. Because right now, exorcism is like low on the priority list, like way down there. But with your new set, it becomes like right up there at the top. But then you also take into the fact that you need a Crusader Strike to keep up your trinket. But then you also need to make sure you judge intermittently every other two judgments to make the other seal, which you have to reapply, go on the target to keep your buff up. Yeah, I... I feel for you guys. I do. I I don't know what's gonna happen though. Do you have any thoughts, Soul? On what? Um, I'll reroll Warlock. Oh no! <laughs> Boomkin. Oh well, on that Boomkin part, you're actually a Boomkin right now, progressing on Blackhand though, right, Bear? Yeah. Because Fight doesn't like melee, and the Guild likes Moonkin. Well, the balconies like Moonkins. Yeah. Yes. It takes so much skill to stand in a circle and. Fucking hit Starfall. It's it's funny that you mentioned the the Boomkin thing though, uh, and the Warlock thing for you, Soul, because our Retribution Paladin, who was ret all of BRF, is now on his Warlock. For 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 Black Hand. <sighs> yep, yeah, no, he, he he totally is. He's on his Warlock because L O L melee. So yeah. yeah. Well, for, just talking that for a brief moment again. Sure. BR, BRF is. Horrible for melee. I don't know what Blizzard were thinking when they—they they must have like one specific person between individually designed one encounter. Then they're like, okay, that's fine. And then the next creator comes along and he just, well, this is also kind of the same, but it has more or things like that. So it just—it doesn't look like they took one step back and like had a glance at, is this maybe too much of the, you know, don't bring melee. Because that, that's the feeling that I get, at, at least. Right. Well, we went through the... And all the boss I've tested so far. Melee can be a little more happy. Hellfire Citadel is not a no-melees playground. I think you could definitely really bring between a good amount, like between five and seven, and you'd be fine on almost every encounter so far. I've tested ten of them. So... Two of them are just bad for both melee and ranged. So Tyrant Valhari and the Iron Reaver are both just crap for both classes. So, yay, we're both going to be awful on that for almost everybody. Except Hunters. Except Hunters, damn it. So it won't be too bad. I think Hellfire will be a little better for the uh, the, the melee grumpiness. So it should be all right. But all righty then. Moves along real quick here. I have some things to tell you guys about behind the scenes and some communities that you should uh, know about here. If you haven't heard about it already on the show before, um, then you're going to right now. There's a little place called summonstone.com. Don't know. It's a, it's pretty nice. This website put together by Skullflower. 
that has a whole lot of really, really good class guides. More, of course, on the way. They keep being filled in, and of course, they'll be updated for 6.2. Link is down below to summonstone.com. And oh, look who's who's doing this. What's what's this? Who's uh? Someone wrote this uh, red pally guide. Sounds kind of familiar. Who's this uh? The soul soul scrub uh -oh. guy. Who's who's this? Who the hell is that? Never heard of him before. I don't know. So you can actually see Soul's guide on Summon Stone. It goes through summary of the class, abilities, openers, and rotations, talents, seraphim and empowered seals, glyphs, gear, stats, boss guides, add-ons and macros, <gasps> and simulations. And I'm um, assuming you'll might have to be adding a one-handed section soon. <laughs> right, Soul? Maybe? Hopefully not. I hope not. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll I really see. hope not. We'll have to see. And of course the Paladin IRC information is right down here as well. And there's a Google document that I can link you guys in chat as well that uh, you can figure out how to get in that IRC if you want to go in the Hammer of Wrath IRC and talk about Red Pally stuff. Go go for that. Go for that. Additionally, more Paladin stuff over here. You can always go check out sacredduty.net. This is more protection Paladin oriented, of course, but it's by Feck. And uh, I'm sure many more things will come out for 6.1 protection, he wrapped up everything here, but when 6.2 drops, if you want to get a whole lot of math and theory and stat weights and, and haste values, all this other stuff, as well as lots of weak aura strings for many, many things orientationed to every class, not just Paladin, you can go check out sacredduty.net for more of that stuff, of course. Additionally, if you have missed any episodes of Final Boss TV in the past, our YouTube page is right down below. We are also located on iTunes and Stitcher for the audio-only version of all of our past episodes. But our YouTube page has everything. It has the side content that I produce. It has the extra videos it has. We have the On My Own Machinima. We have the War Crime stuff coming soon. We have all my kill video POVs, all the past interviews. See, there's, there's Sloot and Trekkie with their cats. Yep, and me with a Pikachu because I don't have one. So you can check out more Paladin stuff. There's Boomkins if you want to re-roll. They're right there. Warlock's coming soon, of course. But all of that on our YouTube page. And as well, if you want to help support Final Boss TV, we have a store. We've had this for a little while. I don't know if you've heard about this. Designed by humans. We have our Method shirt up here. You can go on the side. You can pick between shirts, uh, both male and female cuts, tank tops, hoodies, sweatshirts, phone cases, and some art prints. Of course, all the uh, proceeds go to just supporting Final Boss TV and making content that doesn't go to buying me sushi. And uh, free shipping over certain orders. And there's a discount code that I think Chad has spammed multiple times. You can save some money off that. And... We thank you for all your support, everybody. Just even watching the show, being right here right now is awesome. Thank you so much for that. But that's enough about that. It's time for um, some really enthralling talent discussion now with Rhett Pallies. I'm sure we're going to have plenty of choices here, right? Right, boys? Lots of choices in your talent calculator here, maybe? Too many. There's like, what, nine different combinations that we can go with for PV? And this is the only class I think I've run into that actually said that ever. Because <laughs> normally it's like, you pick this and that. If you're A-Wing, you pick that and that, and you're done. Yeah, well, for Black Heart Founder, you have the choice of picking D1 talent combination that actually works for AoE, or you just pick any other and you just decide to, well, I'm not good at AoEs, I'm just, just not going to bother. It's like that, so... Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you're level 100 talents. Let's go over here real quick. You've got Final Verdict, which I think the, the mantra of this talent is that it's too good and it has too much stuff caked into it. So, you've got an empowered version of Templar's Verdict that costs the same amount of holy power and deals uh, weapon damage as holy damage. You also get the Divine Storm bonus, the Final Verdict Storm buff, which increases the damage by 100% and its radius by 50%. You have the New Inquisition which looks cooler, but it's pretty much the same damn thing. You have Seraphim, 30 second cooldown for five holy power. You look awesome for 15 seconds and you get 1,000 to your hate, 1,000 rating to your haste, crit, mastery, motor strike, and versatility. Eh. Of course, the nerfed version for Prot because it was too good. And then you have the new up and comer here in Empowered Seals, which you would be judging, uh, the tooltip is too big for my screen right now, hang on. You'll be judging uh, truth for the attack power and righteousness for the haste. So, like, what's what's the current thought process behind these talents? Like, what is just final verdict just too good right now for almost everything until tier eighteen bear? Like, what's the where are the strengths here? The 
current standing is that Empowered Seals and Seraphim doesn't interact with Divine Purpose or Empowered Divine Storm. And in Blackrock Foundry, since there's a lot of advice, you don't really have a choice to use them properly unless you, as I said, if you if you just give up on trying to AoE, you can't pick them. But final verdict coupled with Divine Purpose is too strong. Yeah. But, but, but like that's because of the tier bonuses as well, so. Sure. Right, right. So, I mean, how how else are your talent choices? So you said there's like nine, nine or ninety seven uh, different interactions. So what are the different like layouts you could have for for talents and why? Um, well, basically, for the most part, it can boil down to your preference. Um, there's a couple combos that don't work really well. Uh, specifically, Divine Purpose and Seraphim and, and Empowered Seals, simply because it takes up a ton of globals. And for whatever arbitrary reason, Seraphim has no interaction with Divine Purpose, either consuming the Holy Power or spending it. Right, okay. Yeah, you just, um, you just, it's just the new, it's new Inquisition, basically. It's just a passive. It's just You do more damage when you're in it. And the, the, the inner skill cap with with Seraphim, though, right, is you need to make sure you land on 5 Holy Power again when the 30-second cooldown's off, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you have that Holy Power before Seraphim is even off cooldown. Right. So you have, you're just, basically what that gameplay encourages is waiting and not doing anything. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's fun, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's total ass. So you, you basically wait for it to come off cooldown, it activates, and you just wait and then you start building your generators. And I don't think that was really the gameplay they wanted out of it, but that's how it works out. Right. It has other pitfalls and implications as well, especially considering the fact that our AoE output is strictly holy from holy power expenditure, and Seraphim soaks all that holy power up. So once you burn that holy power, you've got nothing to AoE with. Whereas the other talents, you know, if a mob pack spawns, those talents are teeing off on that mob pack, where Seraphim, you're just sitting there on your hands. Yeah. Mm. I, I, like, for me, I like the idea of pooling your resources or spending your resources all at once and do something special. I, I just think Seraphim is a really badly implemented way to do it, so. Right. So what about empowered seals then? This is this is the new up and comer, right? So how is this going to be, and why is it even going to be a thing? Well, currently free of set bonuses, empowered seals is our strongest talent from a deterministic standpoint. It's wow. the strongest output talent, bar none. Hmm. But the thing is, is when we get to simulating that, we got to figure out, you know, when we're when we're using our seal dancing and whatnot, and it just barely ekes out ahead of final verdict without tier bonuses. But with tier bonuses, it's competitive, but simply because of that play style that it implements, it's just not really worth using because it's not doing anything better than final verdict already does. Now, how, with the whole interaction with the fact that you have a 20-second buff that stays up on your character after you judge truth or um, uh, righteousness... How how does the rotation work using empowered seals though? Like how many judgments do you do for one, and then when do you actually find time to switch seals to go to the other one, and then do you immediately go back to truth immediately when you can? Because or, or is there no DPS loss there? Like how how is that gameplay work? Um, the answer to that is it's too dynamic to say for sure. Like when we're Ooh. modeling it, we can throw in some set variables that we need to explain it. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough for what we need to explain how the talent works. Um, for a gameplay perspective, you would only want to swap your seals if a seal is down. So that would be your number one priority if truth is down. Um, if it's not down and it has like eight seconds left on the duration, you would use your seal swap in place of exorcism on your rotation table. But it's in place of exorcism, but how does that gonna work out in tier 18? <laughs> We're gonna have to fiddle with that. I'm not sure yet. Mm. It's, it's gonna take quite a bit of. Uh... Yeah. I think Saul did a, a quick simulation on it yesterday that if you put uh, exorcism exorcism at the top of your rotation at the at the moment, 
you'd lose like a thousand DPS effectively, effectively just doing that. But so so that means in next tier using the two set you're automatically automatically going to lose a thousand DPS just using that two set. So. Mm. Well, now is that losing just the passive amount of DPS because of the priority system moving on, but then you gain like the burst windows back because you can use Avenging Wrath more often? Yeah, you you gain it back, but like for non cooldown, you lose roughly a thousand DPS. That's what I got from it at least. That's right, not, that's, not mean, a, that's that's a bit of DPS taking stick at. That's that's a bit of a loss there. Yeah, it is, and you're gonna have to measure that against the gain of that cooldown reduction, and chances are, I mean. That's theoretically, that's the loss we're going to have. But chances are, when you look at an actual fight, a lot of these fights are going to promote you actually holding on to your cooldowns for bursty periods of those fight, fights. Right. That two-piece really isn't doing anything. It's it's different looking at your reduction cooldown ability, being Avenging Wrath, and arguably, if you don't take Holy Avenger, that's the only really one you have, or Seraphim, I guess, in that regard. But, like, I have a reduction cooldown right now. I reduce the cooldown of my wolves. And there's been no times where I've like, okay, they're coming back up sooner, but I have to hold the cooldown. Because they're not a major cooldown, they just kind of like do their thing and rah, 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 rah. But with your only major cooldown in Avenging Wrath, if you reduce the cooldown faster, but then have to wait to use it on certain parts of the fight anyway, what the hell is the point, you know? Exactly. Or, or the bigger point, you have to wait to use it with the Legendary Ring. Oh, yeah, that's that's another thing. You know, it might be entirely useless, and you just want to sink your Avenging Wrath with the ring anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's also why we're not really talking about that as like an episode yet. We'll have like one episode dedicated to that damn thing if it goes live like that. Yeah. Get like six, sixteen people, one representative for each class and spec and whatnot. Of course, so yeah, we, be so, a we, so we so we can like cry round table. Yeah. yeah. The twenty guest episode, yeah, it'll be a madhouse. No, not yeah. gonna happen, but yeah, <laughs> love to see. So going based off that, uh, to go back on final verdict, we had talked about how there's a little bit too much involved in this talent, and barring, let's say, a player that can't keep up with the empowered seals play style, I would assume they just go final verdict. But didn't you both think like the actual extra divine storm damage interaction is also like? A, too much, or B, also a Band-Aid? Like, should that be removed? No, I don't think it should be removed. I mean, that's just... If it is, that's just Blizzard taking the path of least resistance with design. Right. It, what they should do is make the other talents more appealing on their own, not nerfing mm -hmm. one because they're too lazy to make everything else interesting. Sure. But uh, the big thing with Final Verdict is it's the effects outside of Empowered Divide and Storm altering your rotation... They're entirely passive. And on top of that, we get extra range so we can dump resources where other melee wouldn't be able to. And the fact that it's just, you know, the um, it gives us cleave where we don't have it otherwise to target cleave. Yeah. Right. But it, well, it, it quote unquote gives you cleave, but normally with the final verdict playstyle, you're also coupling that with divine purpose so you can get cleave or. Maybe not. So. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, it, it's not in your hands. That's a maybe. Right. <laughs> sure. So what about then, uh, so the uh, other fight in particular that you would say that you actually move around your level 100 talents a bit? Like you don't just like leave it as final verdict and go to town? Like you actually would, would say that it was a good point to actually change your talents based off the encounters? Or is going off of tier 18 empowered seals all day, every day. Mm, for now, it's final verdict for everything, simply because our current set bonuses cater to it. Sure. Uh, next tier, that's kind of up in the air, but it's really looking like empowered seals is going to be the go-to talent, but that mm. remains to be seen. I mean, it, it, it depends on what you assign assignment for the encounter is going to be as well. For Sure. Like that one boss that makes you go into the into his stomach to do something. I mean, it it creates upsets in your rotation or your priorities and so on. So, like, it also depends on your assignments. Like I said, on siege engineer or whatever the battle boss in siege of Orgrimmar, you have picked one talent because it gives you a lot of single target burst and so on. If you weren't on that. If you didn't have that assignment, you'd go to my purpose for the extra AOE on the 
bots and so on. Like things like that's gonna alter your priority anyway. So it's still right. too early to say. I mean, I think in that regard, what I gather from this whole discussion so far is that, like, you know, kind of like how feral druids right now, which when we get to them, we'll find out that they're basically single target machines. Their AoE and cleave is non-existent, even after it was nerfed and then buffed a little bit back. Like, they, they, all they do is they tunnel bosses, right? And that's, that's, that works for them, I suppose. You kind of always count on your feral druid to tunnel the boss. And in a certain way, paladins are like the same thing. Feral druids bring, like, roar. And I guess they can also bring, like, monsoon or knockback, stuff like that. So there's sort of a similar vein there where rep paladins can be sort of like, um, they're going to tunnel the boss, they're going to time their cooldowns to put more single target damage into the boss. But you could also then spec, if the fight calls for it, you can go battle avert it and divine purpose, you know, do some possible good AoE and cleave. So is that just kind of how it feels? Definitely. That's how it's playing out right now. Right. Um... Just for simplicity's sake, I could see us going final verdict next year, just to not deal with the hassle. I sure. mean, those three talents in a single target scenario are tuned pretty tightly, so it really is just preference at the moment. Well, so if you're going for that build, is it also just executioner sentence as well? Moving out of the level ninety tier talents is is ES still like the number one go to? Yep. Yep. There's not much use in Light's Hammer or Holy Prism at the moment. Holy Prism is actually entirely useless. Don't even use it. It's a DPS loss. Is it actually like mathematically? Yeah. Against the other talents, yeah. Wow. Um, Light's even if, Hammer. E even if you're in a cleave situation and you, you target yourself to get the spread damage on five extra targets, still not, not good? Not worth it? No, nope, not worth it. The problem with it... Well, call it a problem. It's on a 20-second... Uh, cooldown, so it takes up three times as many uh, global yes. cooldowns as, as the other two. Yep. And the any damage just isn't worth it to, when you consider that those two extra levels could be used for something else. So it's it's just a loss, regardless if you have forty targets to cleave or whatever. Sure. Well, it's limited to five, but whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know there. So are there situations for lights hammer though, or it looks so cool, but I guess just no, not that good. Uh, the the math, be. yeah, the, the math is what like eight targets if they stay in this inside the thing for the full duration or something like that. I mean, uh, two targets, but yeah. that rarely happens these days, especially with Blackrock Foundry. Right. I think the only fight I'm thinking of now in my mind that could make use of this is actually Tyrant Velhari because she always has one bodyguard with her the entire fight, or Hellfire High Council, where the two, um, both the Blade Lord. And blood and blood. Um, um, oh my God, the blood rage guy are all next to it all the time. So you could maybe do it on that one, um, possibly. But yeah, I guess that makes sense. That's unfortunate. That would be a good example of its use. Yeah. If there's two targets, at least two, that you can have the stay in the entire duration, it becomes a benefit for 14 yeah. seconds. But um, I mean, as as there might be some warriors in chat right now, it always happens. I'm gonna drop my ravenger. Oh, there goes the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. the main problem for Lightsummer is that it's a 14 or 16 second cooldown or duration. And we talked about it. This is like the last Paladin, Earth Paladin show. Sure. The cooldown, it's, or the duration has to be halved, ideally, and the same damage in that half time duration. Yep. Is it, 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 it just lasts too long. Like, when was the last time as stayed alive for 14 seconds? I mean, yeah. yeah, does I mean chat brings up? Do you, you would you use light hammer on on like Iron Maidens or because you're going on the boats, you'd probably just take executioner sentence to use on the boat guys, right? If that you're not going on a boat, then yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> not going on a boat on Maidens, you can use light hammer. But if you're going on a boat, you take executioner sentence because you're wanting to time that up with cooldowns on the uh, big red blood guy or uh, or whatnot. Yeah, okay. I, I also use it on Flamebender for the dog since it if you use ah, it on pull if uh, if you use it if you use it on pull, you know you're you're gonna have it for the pull which have the has the extra mob there and then right. you'll then it also lines up for the first dogs and then it lines up for the raid stacking up and healing and then you use it on the second spot of dogs and so on so it lines up really well for that fight but the damage okay. portion of it is still rather okay. weak. Okay. So there, there is a little bit of interaction there, but it's good to see yeah. that Holy Prism is still uh, poop. That's that's. <laughs> yeah. 
So now, how do things change with Sanctified Wrath and Holy Avenger? So, like, how... When do... I, I guess Holy Avenger's on its way out with the new tier set coming, but then Sanctified Wrath gets, like, a pretty big boost, right? It does, yeah. From Just from that cooldown reduction. It's probably going to be our go-to talent, even for cleave scenarios. Yeah. I don't think Divine Purpose will be able to keep up. It's already the weakest of the three options. Sure. So you're looking at like a, a, a Sanctified Wrath, Executioner, Sentence, Empowered Seal as like your, your go-to probably for Tier 18 four-piece, most likely? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you'd almost say like for almost every fight, you think? Or... Possibly. Um, just because of all the rotational clutter, I almost want to say we might be using Final Verdict instead. Mm. Because that really does simplify things, and of I'm course. not so sure, you know, all that juggling is really going to be worth the work as it is now, you know? Okay. It's just that it's simply, you know, what's theoretically best versus which is just practical. Right. Is the... Is the argument for Empowered Seals versus Final Verdict more of a single tart versus Cleaver AoE encounter? Because would you want to take Final Verdict to have the that bonus on the Empowered um, Divine Storm, even without Divine Purpose, still for some snap AoE or Cleave? Oh, definitely. Um, if it just free of set bonus influence when it comes right down to it, Empowered Seals is the clear single target winner of the three. Okay. But the moment you start introducing adds or prior other priority targets... Final Verdict is the best talent because you can just swap to that mob and just start dumping Final Verdict into it. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's because there's some... There's... <sighs> Chat would have loved this one. Empowered Seals is sort of like you're juggling two Hunger for Blood buffs, most likely. That actually lasts shorter time. Hunger for Blood was 30 seconds back in the day. Um, and Empowered Seals is 20. So if there's a lot of movement and target swapping, I can only assume that but like any other fight that's like single target oriented or tunneling, then I guess, yeah, 20% haste and 15% attack power on that one hander will come in handy. <laughs> it could. It could. I mean, so, you wouldn't be using the one hander strictly. It would no, be course, in between. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully that doesn't have to come to pass. But um, are there any other like talent combinations that work well together? Bear? Like what else would you like suggest for certain encounters with Rhett? Like how would you lay out talents differently? You know, if we ever get into the abomination that was uh, Spine of Deathwing, where you have like 10, 15 seconds to burst down a single target, then you know you could, in theory, take uh, Holy Avenger and uh, Seraphim together. But I mean, yeah, Th that's a combination that's great for burst, but it's not potentially the best for the rest of the encounters or encounter. Right. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would be very conducive to have to have that so it might just be i mean there's just too much to to manage i think i mean between you're looking at i guess there's skill caps involved in different classes and different talent layouts but looking between the final verdict interactions and seraphim and then empowered seals there's like this definitely a staircase of like one's really easy you hit templar's verdict anyway you replace it with final verdict it looks cooler and it makes you know it's Make sure uh, Divine Storm do more damage when you get the, the procs and you have to do that. And Seraphim is like this pooling system and timing. Every 30 seconds, you have to make sure you have your 5 holy power. And then Empowered Seals is you're looking at maximizing your GCDs even more than you do anyway. So it's weird. But I guess it, depending on how the set bonus look like, Seraphim is probably not going to see much use in Tier 18. Uh, not in its current implementation, no. Yeah, Some it, things would have to change with the talents design entirely for that to really happen. Right. Right, gotcha. How about um, any other talks on maybe like the tier 45s or tier 60 talents? Like, I know there's some, some hubbub in the community, I guess, because your tier 60s sort of have the Death Knight problem where you get a, you know, an outside buff for your raid, or you get, you know, two uses of your hands, or you get an actual personal for yourself, you know, improving your own personal survivability. And that's a big trade-off. But is that just yeah. a fight-to-fight -fight thing you guys just swap around based on what you need? It depends. I mean, it also... The big factor here is our utility isn't unique to red. Correct, Holy and correct, prod correct. bring the same thing. So a lot of the time, your utility is just utterly superfluous in the face of those specs. So we're just 
delegated to taking Unbreakable Spirit simply for the need to stay alive thanks to Blackrock Foundry and the melee, blah, blah, blah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how it is. <laughs> Pretty much. And then what about uh, Chatroom asks, does Rhett have any off healing or like that too? Like, what, is there any situations where you would take like selfless healer, I guess, would be your off healing shot, right? I guess. Or is that to keep yourself alive too? It could be. that It's more or less used for personal survivability. Our big off-healing utility piece is actually lay on hands. Sure. And that's the only one that sees any liberal use. Yeah. I mean, you, you can take selfless healers for those big raid... Like, if there's just one big raid nuke, and then you can top yourself up instantly or top someone else up instantly. I mean, it costs some global cooldowns. So it's a DPS loss or something, but sure. Sacred Shield is... More or less, always what I use because it's you use one one global and then you have effectively some increased health for thirty seconds. So you actually you do you so sacred shield? I know I use sacred shield on my uh, red paladin because I was just like I think it's like the it sounds awful but it's like more of the lazy excuse. It's sort of like just keeping up this buff. You just recast it before it's got to fall off every thirty seconds. It's one GCD, and during that time you get just more effective health, like you said, but. Um, I guess selfless healing would be pretty powerful, considering that you're never going to get the uh, the extra bonus when you kill something in a raid, unless you get a killing blow on like an ad to get the extra healing to yourself. But no, uh, never eternal flame, right? Never, never eternal flame. As useless as retribution. The fact that it takes holy power is the big detriment to it. But, it's a huge DPS loss. But 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 what about harsh words? Doesn't interact with. We don't have harsh words anymore. They took that away from Rhett and Brought and just gave it the holy. <laughs> yep. yep, that is true. That is true. That was just me being stupid because that was uh, that was a weird talk we had in Mop about it. And it was just like, there's no GCDs for it, so what the hell is the point anyway? So just <clears throat> gone. Yep. Do you have any thoughts on the, the movement tier? I guess that's fight to fight dependent, unless you guys, either of you, like have huge proponents for Pursuit of Justice or Long Arm of the Law. I don't know if uh. that falls into any argumentative points there. I, I liked Speed of Light before. Now it's it's it, it's honestly not those big fights anymore, at least not in Blackrock Found where you need Burst of Light, because mo most of the time you stay on the boss in a way where you move like 10-15 yards and it's, it's just not something yeah. anymore. So uh, the judgment speed is most of the time the best talent, but you know, just the Passive increase of movement speed is also good for like half of the fights in Black Rock Foundry. How how does Pursuit of Justice's passive movement speed stack with the new movement speed stacking stuff in the Cloak Enchant? Do you actually get twenty five percent movement, or do you get ten percent of fifteen or fifteen percent of ten? How does that work? The only one it stacks with is the Cloak Enchant, but it doesn't stack with the Windwalker Aura. Um, it's not stated in the tooltip. It doesn't stack with other movement increasing effects aside from the cloak itself right. and the speed tertiary. Okay. But yes, yeah, that's, that's still pretty quick, I suppose, if you're just more used to the passive. I know that I use Long Arm of the Law most of the time uh, and Speed of Light, depending on what I'm doing, but yeah. But I haven't, I haven't tried Pursuit of Justice yet, if that's, that's pretty good. That's almost like 30% passive movement speed if you get any tertiary speed. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty yeah, quick. it's actually uh, default movement speed at holy power cap is like 150% with that talent. It's, it's not bad, yeah. It's actually kind of funny because if you use empowered seals, you could get another 20% oh, I think. So that's you true. Get, yeah, I, I don't know how it stacks per, exactly. but you It's know. additive. Yeah, so you, you, you're basically a go-kart. A oh, go-kart. I mean, would you... Uh, this is a good point, you didn't talk about that. You can technically judge justice to get that yeah. other sprint that would stack with Pursuit of Justice and the Cloak Enchant, I guess. I don't know. That still wouldn't save you on Manoroth, though. We still gotta knock you off the castle without getting pooped in the goop. But, um... Eh, movement speed is a thing, I guess. The only big benefit, I think, of that would... It's possible to stay on Blackhand better. <laughs> in Mythic. He's moving around so much, but... Yeah. Are there in, any... In that... Oh, go ahead. In that scenario, you would just default to long arm of the law so you can get that snap on demand movement. Sure. That's true. Are there any glyphs of note that you want to bring up that are incredibly important to have for Red Pallies that uh, they should not forget about? 
just glyph of Templar's verdict. Actually, we don't really have any useful glyphs uh, available to read, unfortunately. It's so weird. Well, glyph of Templar's verdict, and I would assume glyph of uh, hand of sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. The other the other two slots are interchangeable with a few things, but in the grand scheme of things, they don't do much. I always go with the Templar's verdict and sacrifice glyph. Those are the two I consider mandatory, and then you can like. The judgment or exorcism glyph is the two theoretical damage increases, but they're yeah. so so insignificant it doesn't really impact much. Yeah, mass exorcism is kind of poo. Double jeopardy, I guess, does something, but it's very situational. I mean, you can min max it on a council fight where your every other judgment goes on the other target. Mm -hmm. But if you're already seal twisting and you make sure you, get, it, you yeah, that yeah. But um, any t any glyphs to stay away from? I don't know if there are any glyphs that are bad. I guess I mean, you can even go divine storm technically on AOE fights. I know why I had that glyph for Tectus Mythic when I was doing that split runs. But um, um, there's only one trap glyph, and that's the uh, glyph of Seal of Truth or Immediate Truth. I think it's called. Immediate I can't truth, remember yeah. offhand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a complete trap. It's a DPS loss to even take it. Yeah, I don't know why it's still in the game right now because they removed Truth from Prot. So, it's like, I don't know what, it's not even a PvP thing. Like, I don't even know what it is. It's, it's just, boom, needed to get it away. Uh, I saw a chat room um, sitting here. Um, what is the, uh, uh, Glyph of Word of Glory? The damage increase after Word of Glory. Um, I think that has PvP implications that I'm not quite aware of. Uh, I mean... The way to look at it from a PvS perspective is if is if you're in deep shit, then it's 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 a glyph to use, you know, to soften the blow of the damage loss. I can't if I can't imagine that it would be that because the nine percent damage you gain that lasts for six seconds, but you used holy power to do it. Yeah. Like you can't even like build something back up in that sense. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you could in theory use it on use a, uh, a word of glory on yourself at five holy power, and then build one holy power with a builder, and then use the templates rate and get nine percent extra damage. But then you're losing again like eight one or ninety one percent, like whatever damage from a potential templates rate already Of course. Yeah, it, it, never use it. Yeah. Of course, I gotta gotta make sure I didn't have this already on here. But this is this minor glyph right down here is really important. I don't know if you guys have heard of this uh, glyph of righteous retreat. I've heard it's pretty good, uh, pretty important glyph for progression right here. Yeah. Oh, it's an absolute must-have. Yeah. <laughs> gotta save on those repair bills. <laughs> oh man. The the, be the best to use of it is at the end of night. You ninja pull and then you bubble and goodbye. Does it increase the speed of your garrison hearthstone or no? Don't think no, so. I think, you no, can already. I think, uh, cast gears in uh, her stone anyway yeah, yeah right yeah it's super quick yeah that's a good point yep fair enough well gentlemen it comes to soapbox time now uh bear do you have anything you want to leave the retribution paladin with some hints tips insider information secrets or any little nuggets of knowledge before we get out of here uh, only like a message to blizzard or devs who are potentially gonna watch this is that they need to decide on a direction to put uh red paladins in whether it's going to be single target turret DPS like Arcane Mages or AOE or Cleave, because we we don't have a niche at the moment. We need, or it seriously hurts that we don't have something that we shines on. So we just, if we're mediocre to bad on everything, what's the reason to play one? Or what's the reason to bring one in the first place? And it, it really feels awful and really demoralizing to just not shine on anything. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird spot right now. Hopefully something does change. What about you, Soul? What you got? I would I'd plead a blizzard for a change, but I'm pretty sure they're already aware of what we want based upon <laughs> what I've said here and posted elsewhere. Right. So I'm not I'm not really concerned about that. But uh I'd just say keep on fighting the good fight and don't let the man take you down. <laughs> it, it is a little awkwardly disheartening, obviously as chat room hopefully has discerned as the show has been going on for 80 episodes now 
the information we bring to you guys is obviously not to change your mentality of a class. If the top guilds aren't using certain classes, they're playing a different game than we are. Their eye levels are less when they're in progression. Their focus on what they're doing and their strats are different. So if you're not in one of those guilds, you can really just play whatever you want. We're just trying to help you understand the ebbs and flows of what's going on right now and make you, you know, a little more knowledgeable of what the, the class is a boot, I, I suppose, in that regard. So don't, like, get disheartened. You shouldn't be, like, sad. Right? Probably still do damage. This is in a weird spot right now, and you're just basically jumping on your keyboard, hitting the button to light up. Hopefully that fixes a little bit in the future here. <sighs> Too many buttons yeah. light up, man. Seven different proc-oriented back-and-forth things. Uh, we'll I mean, see. RNG is... It, it can be fun, but, you know, when... Is it really fun when all you're doing is for 40 seconds just spamming Divine Storm or Temple Jerry because you get Divine Purpose or Divine or Empowered Divine Storm after another? It, it's it it looks funner or it sounds fun or something, but it's not really. You just spam one button. It's it's boring. Yeah, it's and again, I feel that there should be a certain amount of you playing the class because you're playing the game and a little bit of the class being like, hey, you can do this now. Hey, you can do that now, but. It looks like, honestly, that Red Pally has a little bit of just like, instead of the, the bird saying mine from uh, Nemo, they're saying like, proc, 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 proc. Yeah. Damn it. We'll have to see if it changes, friends, but I'm hitting the button right now. So we're going to end the show with that one. So thank you very much for being here and watching the episode. Of course, if you have questions for our guests, we'll be back after the commercial break and a little bit of uh, detoxing for uh, after show. So if you have questions, you can ask on our Twitter or, of course, in chat room. But again, from Hill Report to our guests, sat down with returning from Mr. Pandaria. There's Bear again. You can follow him on Twitter at BearNor. Thank you for being on the show. Always a pleasure. Thanks. And keep up with him in the IRC channel. Ask him questions. Make Rack Hat Brain over things. Right? That's what you're there for, right? Math and stuff and answering questions. Well, solid for math. I'm just for being the <laughs> simpleton. Oh, oh. <laughs> Are you the guinea pig in this relationship? I'm the guinea pig and guild mascot and everything. I'm a fool. <laughs> Additionally, we had uh, Sol Sacra here as well from Vodka. You can go follow him on Twitter at, you know, it's super difficult, S-O-L-S-A-C-R-A. -S Thank you on the show, sir. First time. Awesome. A lot of fun. Yep. Thank you for having me. So ask you the math questions then, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Ask you the math questions. Good, good, good. Very good. And of course, anything about Final Boss TV is on FinalBoss.tv, our new website. Still got some tweaks to make for it. The Final, Bo the Fire Lord's favored page is coming soon, which has all the different relative IRCs and communities you need to go pay attention to if you're of that, you know, class or spec. Soon, of course, all of our podcasts and episodes get dropped there as well. Of course, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, and of course, YouTube. If you've missed the episode, it'll be on uh, YouTube by Monday or at the same time the show goes live on Sunday. If you're on YouTube right now, hello. You can go to the after show. The button's up here somewhere, or it was. So we'll see you guys a little bit. Next week, there is no show. I am out of town. The next show will be on the 17th, I believe. Let me check my calendar. Yeah, 17th. And that will be Protection Warriors to round out all of the war, all the uh, tank classes for World of Draenor. Of course, we'll be doing updated episodes as 6.2 and Hellfire Citadel rolls out. we got to talk about Warriors first, though. Um, shield Barrier is good, I hear. Yeah. So we'll see you guys for that on the 17th. We'll see you on YouTube comments later on. And until next week, everybody, trusting your seal of tempered fate. And bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.